Hello everyone, my name is David. Thank you for joining me today for today's question and answer videos. These are every single Monday. Um, oh, welcome new subscribers, most importantly. Thank you. Hello everyone. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for tuning in for the videos. Anybody have questions, please go down below in the comment section, ask me anything you want. And I'm going to answer them in the next Q&A video next Monday. I'm answering the questions today. I'm answering them from the last Q&A video last Monday, okay? Um, some people are just having a problem. I'm getting questions on older Q&As, stuff like that. People asking me in content videos and saying, David, here's a Q&A question. People trying to email me Q&A questions. Facebook Q&A questions. Please, right here, comment section. Anything you want, okay? If you don't want me to, or someone to know who you are, make another account. That's easier for me. Um, so, and Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy holidays. I hope everyone's managing okay. I hope this, they aren't too stressful. I hope you aren't feeling too lonely if you're by yourself. Okay, it's almost over, right? Another day or two, and that's it. Um, don't worry if you didn't even celebrate. Don't worry if you had a bad one. Next year, you could have a good one. Seriously, sometimes just don't even celebrate if it's going to be bad. And then the next year, it feels better. It's like better. It's been two years almost since you had Christmas, you know? Um... And if you guys want to get into the mood a little bit, and you don't really listen to much Christmas music, or you're not really even in the mood yet today, and you kind of want to, something I always start with is Bean Crosby, Mele Kaliki Maka. <laughs> it's Merry Christmas in Hawaiian, and I love it. It's a really nice, happy, cool, fun song, Christmas song, if you're interested. It's on YouTube, Bean Crosby, um, Christmas songs, Mele Kaliki Maka. Um... I want to thank you, Willa and Matilda, both of you, thank you very much for your donation to the channel. Really appreciate you. Those are the kindest gestures of all. Really helps keep me going, keeps everything uh, functioning and, and working properly. So I can keep doing these Q&As every Monday. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, both of you. And if you guys could, um, there is a petition called Shane's Law that is to help victims of narcissistic abuse like Shane was. Shane was nasty smear campaign for a very long time and until he committed suicide, he couldn't take it anymore. Smear campaigns are very, very abusive, very intrusive, and um, they make, can make you feel suicidal. So Shane lost his life, but not hopefully not in vain. Um, there's been a petition started. If you guys could please go down below into the description box where it says Shane's Law Petition. Please follow that link there and just give your signature. It'll really, really help get this law um, going and to help victims in the future of stuff like this and hold um, abusers accountable, okay? Um, also, I have a recommendation. Sometimes I try to recommend things that I think are just kind of fun for some of you to watch. Um, this, however, is very, it's violent, drugs, sexual content, all things like that. So if things like that you don't like or you can't, you can't tolerate, you won't like this. But if you can tolerate some of those things and you're interested in kind of studying people with personality disorders, I've got to say that this one show here that I came across, um, really the writer tends to, must have some knowledge about personality disorders because the characters um, vary uh, on the, on, in the cluster B in different disorders, and um, I just thought it was really interesting to watch. It's called Animal Kingdom, and it's on TNT. I think they're in their fourth season right now. So if you're interested, go check it out. Um, and also, for you guys who want to answer, ask me a question, all I ask from you is please tell us your location. We all want to know where you guys are from. Thank you very much. Let's get started. First question is from Antoinette. In San Francisco, hello. So I broke no contact, took the narc back after my replacement, dumped him. He came back angrier, drunker. So keep it short, I call police. He's in jail, facing five felonies. He's contacted me since he went in October 20th. I pressed charges. Question, will he try to contact me after sentencing or if he gets out? I'm afraid he's going to want revenge and since he has nothing to lose, and I do, I'm scared he might try to kill me this time. Uh, I'm very sorry, Antoinette. That's awful. I'm very, very sorry. Sorry. Um, I, I wouldn't know if he's going to come back. There, there's no, you know, textbook that tells you yes or no. I, I don't know him. 
I wouldn't want to tell you he won't and give you false security, um, false sense of safety. Um, and, and I don't want to scare you and say, oh, yeah, he's coming back, you know. So best thing to do in any situation like this is to just say, what, would, what can you do if he does? Okay, so you tell yourself he's, he might and you get prepared. Being prepared helps us feel safer and secure. Okay. The other thing is to do is to start healing as much as you can from this experience. Our brains are going to tell us that he's going to come back and do all these scary things, even if he's not, even if he's not like that. Um, the fact that he does cross boundaries and breaks laws, things like this, um, I, I would be prepared. I would be prepared. And I don't think you need to be scared. I don't think you need to be scared. S uh, fear is to serve us. And fear is to keep you safe. So do what you can to feel safe. Move. Get a new address. Change all your you know, ways of him to contact you. And make sure you have a restraining order. You, you can get a restraining order with this kind of information now. Okay? So get a lawyer. When you have legal problems, legal matters, always ask a lawyer. You don't have to, even have to hire one. You can just pay one for free or free information or pay him for some information. Ask him what you can do, what your rights are and things like that, okay? It'll help you feel safer, okay? Also, healing, it will make you feel safer. Time will make you feel safer, okay? Good luck. Um, <clears throat> Paula from Sweden, hello. I would like to know why narcissist wants to be friends with their exes, but at the same time, they are fake and talk bad about them. So... Very juvenile, right? And these what these people are. They're not very socially inept. And they're definitely bad at relationships. And they don't um, begin relationships well. And they don't uh, keep relationships well. And they don't end relationships well. And they have a lot of attachment problems, things like this. Entitlement issues, ownership, control. All kinds of things going on, Paula. So they believe, you know, they don't end relationships. And they try to stay in contact with you because they can't close the door. Okay, and they want to keep control. Um, they talk bad about people, period, because that's how they feel about themselves. Anybody that talks bad about people all the time feels bad about themselves. People that commit smear campaigns, that's how they feel about themselves. They feel like a bad, horrible person, and they think that everybody else is too, and the world is bad, and it's okay to do these things. Okay, so um, <clears> hope <throat> oh, that helps. That's basically it. Thank you. Um, Irene from San Francisco. Hello, Irene. So I was with a narcissist for the past year, off and on. Two discards, re-idealization, etc. I've watched tons of YouTube videos and I've read tons of articles on narcissism. Finally blocked eight days ago. I know he never loved me, never will. Question. I do realize it's different for each person based on numerous factors, but do you eventually stop thinking about them? He's on my mind all the time. Everything reminds me of him. Will it eventually die down and fade away? I've heard some people post that many years later, they still think about them. I do not want to... Okay, so yes, it's all about what you decide to do, okay? So there's all kinds of reasons why you're doing it. And just like a baby, you don't just rip out what you don't want them to put in their mouth. You got to replace it with something else, okay? So it's you can't just tell someone, don't think about that. How about, think about this instead. I, I make tons of videos about stuff like this. Go look at my CPTSD videos. It'll really help you. It'll help you on what you can do about your thinking and what, what actions and behaviors you can take to help control your thoughts, okay? New, 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 change. If you're, if you're in, okay, you had a traumatic experience, right? And then the only thing different is that person is not there. So you're in the same home, same couch, same carpet, same drapes, wearing the same clothes, watching the same show, eating the same food, same time, doing the same thing, talking to the same person, same job, same car, same, every single thing is the same except he's out of the picture. So all you're doing is sit left, left there going, what's missing? Yeah, everything's the same. Change. And, and I can just, you know, go down the list. Move, redecorate, move your furniture around, Get new clothes, new activities, vacation, new people, okay? I talk all about this in my videos. Go watch the CPTSD videos, okay? Good luck. You won't keep thinking about him forever. People that do that don't do anything different. 
They keep everything the same. They don't heal from it. They don't work on themselves. They don't change anything. Okay? Uh, Nina from Norway. Hello. I will ask you about NPD making love, no emotions. He was like a robot. Why are they cheating nonstop with no emotional winning? Is it all about power and control? So is our narcissist cheating? Is it all about power and control? Sure. There's, there's, you know, it's, it's more detailed and it's more complex, but yeah, it's about power and control. Um, these people believe they're trying to feel better. Okay. People that serial date, people that are addicted to love and dating and, and constantly go from one person to the next to the next to the next person and cheat and do stuff like this. They don't feel good. They try to make themselves feel better. Some of this stuff temporarily feels better. Hormones go up, right? They feel all good and then the hormones go back down and then they're critical to you and they cheat on you they leave you. Okay, that's why. So they don't know that that doesn't work. They just keep doing. It's a pattern. You know, over, it's a cycle over and over and over and over again. And they won't stop and look at themselves to realize that this isn't working. And, and that's how they were trained and taught to give themselves what they need, they thought. Demetria. <clears throat> I don't know where you're from, Demetria. Can you please explain to me why narcissists discard and why is it once they discard you, they can just move on as if you never existed? And the purpose of the silent treatment? Well, silent treatment is because they don't know how to handle relationships or talk about their feelings or care about yours. Um, they are, you know, maybe they don't even want to be with you. A lot of this stuff, they probably don't love you. I mean, if I don't care what they're saying. If they can, if they can say, I love you, don't love you, love you, don't love you, like a light switch, you know? I I'm always going to go with they don't love you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because go watch my video I made last Friday. I can't remember if it was last Friday or the week or a week before that Friday. Yeah, it was a week ago last Friday. And it's called something to the effect of does the narcissist love you? And I talk about what I believe love is and and you know, it's a lot more than telling you. It's a lot more than an emotion. It's action required. Show it. And, um, you know, if they just move on like you never existed, they can't, then I just chalk it up, they don't love you. You know, it's a sad thing to, to contemplate, to, you know, it's a sad reality. It can be for sure, but it might be the reality. They don't love you. And the other thing, really, if, if you're worried about did they, it's how did they love you? And if that's how they love you, then you don't want that, right? Uh, they, they can't handle relationships, guys. That's why, we, it's, that's why there are personality disorders, the, the title. People's lives are unmanageable and they can't have relationships with people. And so they're titled with personality disorders. Um, Dorian from Dallas. Hello, Dorian. wants to expand his question more. I've been low contact with my ex for a year and a half. Shared child, been divorced three and a half years. The Hoover was the worst abuse in my life. I realize my issues are from my narc stepmom. You sought therapy, transformed your life, started dating a little earlier than you should have around nine months after I began figuring things out. You feel much healthier, but you still attract unhealthy women who are clingy and gaslight. Two of them even said pretty much that they don't have empathy. Any further info is greatly appreciated. So you want to know why you're attracting these women and the, it doesn't matter who you're attracting. It doesn't matter who's attracted to you. Who cares, right? Who's attracted to you? You're attracted to them. Why? So why are you attracted to unhealthy people? It, the only answer can be because you're not healthy yet. You're not recovered yet. You haven't fully healed yet. And I'm glad you've been in therapy. That's great. And you're healing. You're just not fully there yet, is my guess. You know? Um, keep going. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. It's working. You said it's working. Feeling better. Great. Just not there yet. A lot of people want to speed this process up. And it, and it, takes, it can take a long time. Okay? And it's not totally up to us and what we just decide and want and expect. Um, our brain, very big, powerful 
complex organ. And when it's traumatized, it takes time. And however long it takes, that's just how long it takes. Okay, but you're doing good things. Keep going. My recommendation is don't date yet. Okay? <clears throat> A good indicator you guys aren't ready to date yet is stuff like this. If, if, if you're attracted to unhealthy people. Um, here's a little test. If somebody is, you know, I remember when I was very unhealthy, I was attracted to unhealthy people. And, and you could tell me all about some girl before I even meet her. And, you know, say, hey, David, someone comes to me, David, here's an attractive girl that, that says, you know, she wants, she saw you somewhere, saw a photo, whatever, she wants to meet you. Uh, she's really nice, whatever. And, but she does have a past, you know, she's been massively abused and neglected her whole life and bad, toxic relationships in her past. But she's nice. Nice one. Healthy people will tend to say, well, I don't think I want to date that person. There's nothing wrong with that person because they've been abused. It's just the, the odds are they haven't healed or recovered from that, especially if they're having bad relationships. It, you know, so be better to choose somebody who's had a good, nice, strong, healthy past, right? But if your feelings about that are, oh, I feel sorry for them, I want to help them, that's great, I, I've had a bad past too, you know, there, there's strong indications that you haven't healed and recovered from your past either. Just really feeling sorry for people and really needing to overextend your help to people all the time, you know, there might be something you need to help for yourself a little more. Um, so that's what I think. And I know where you're at. I understand this. Um, I've experienced this a long time ago. And, and I, it, it'll tell you. It'll tell you that you, it's, it's about you and there's still more work you need to do. Keep doing what you're doing. Give yourself more time. Okay? Thanks. Vanessa. Hello, Vanessa. From Indiana. Please tell us more about the shame basis these narcissists exist through. It seems to be the least thing that is understood. I get guilt and regrets, but not this whole shame thing. I often say how <clears throat> people, narcissists, abusers, are very shame-based, shame-ridden. They cover it with ego. So, shame. I made a video titled, Shame. If you're interested, go watch it. But quickly, <clears throat> difference between shame and and guilt. Guilt is I did a bad thing. And guilt, you can forgive yourself. Someone can just forgive you. Sometimes some time goes by. You feel better. You know? You did a bad thing. Shame, however, is you're a bad person. I'm a bad person. Somebody made me feel I'm a, like I'm a bad person. Someone di didn't just make me feel bad. They made me feel like I'm a bad person. Unworthy. It lowers your self-worth. Direct product of shame. Um, how do you know you might have shame? Not just poor boundaries, but you, you attempt to have boundaries you say, no, you can't, but it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. And people still cross your boundaries. You don't hold them up very well. You need to feel worthy. You need to feel worthy. And with shame in our lives, telling us we're bad people, you, you don't feel very worthy. Um, you can, we carry shame around like a big, I, I say it's like, and this is what I see. When I see other people with lots of shame, it looks like they're carrying around a big wet blanket around their shoulders, right? Go look at a liquor store. Watch people walking in and out of liquor store. A lot of them, you can see the shame right in them. And that's what we do. We cover it up. We numb it. Drugs, alcohol, eating disorders, uh, uh, spending habits, and all kinds of things we do about shame, except what we should do. And that's really make ourselves feel better, right? And a lot of us don't know how to do that do things for ourselves, but we need to make ourselves feel better in a lot of ways. The best way that I know how to get rid of shame is you sit with somebody else you trust and you tell them all about the incident and you get 
to that feeling that you really feel that way again that you did back then. You really capture that feeling again. And by talking about it, by going back and experiencing these bad feelings again later, now, in an environment where you're an adult and you feel more in control and you're talking with somebody else and all these things, and your brain seems to just calm those feelings down, you're doing it now, you're making yourself feel better about that, that incident, that situation, you're talking about it and trying to understand so that it makes sense to you. So instead of just me saying, oh man, that wasn't right how your, your father treated you back then, don't worry about it, he's an, he's an a-hole, you know? That doesn't work. But if you go back and say, when my father did this to me, it really made me feel like this and really remember how that feeling felt again. And then you understand that, yeah, that, that's not right. My father has problems and he shouldn't have done that to me and I didn't deserve that and I was just a kid. And then you forgive yourself kind of thing, a little self-compassion. And a lot of this shame just goes away and you keep talking about it until it does, until it does. And, and here again, more clues that that big, shameful, emotional, traumatic feelings that aren't dealt with and processed stay that way forever, stay open forever until you go back and close them, okay? Hope that makes sense. Feel free to go back and watch my video titled Shame, okay? Thank you, Vanessa. And I'm going to stop part one here and I'll continue part two in a few minutes. Thank you all for watching. If you could please help me, what I'm doing by helping other people is Please um, support this video by, by you know, voting up or down, commenting, putting it in the playlist, um, sharing it on different social medias, forums, and groups. Thank you very much, guys. See you in part two. Bye-bye.